Thank you, Mr. President. Paul Ryan from Wisconsin. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, first of all, thanks for agreeing to accept our, our invitation here. Mm -hmm. It is a real pleasure and honor to have you with it's us here to today. Is this your, your crew right here, by yeah, the way? This is, this is my daughter. Eliza, my son, Charlie, and Sam, and this is my wife, Jan. Hey, guys. So, How are you? <laughs> um, I, I serve as a ranking a member of the Budget Committee, so I want to talk a little budget, if you don't yeah. mind. The spending bills that you've signed into law, the domestic discretionary spending has been increased by 84 um, percent. You now want to freeze spending at this elevated level uh, beginning next year. Uh, this means that total spending in your budget uh, would grow at three hundredths of one percent less than otherwise. I would simply submit that we could do more and start now. Um, you've also said that you want to take a scalpel to the budget and go through it line by line. We want to give you that scalpel. Uh, I have a proposal with my home state senator, Russ Feingold, bipartisan proposal, to create a constitutional version of the line item veto. Mm -hmm. uh, problem is, we can't even get a vote on the proposal. Uh, so my question is, why not start freezing spending now, and would you support uh, a line item veto and helping us get a vote on it in the House? Uh, let, let me respond to the two specific questions, but I want to just push back a little bit on the, the underlying premise about us increasing spending by 84 percent. Now, look, uh, I uh, talked to Peter Orzag right before I came here because I suspect uh, I'd, be hearing this, I, I'd be hearing this argument. The fact of the matter is, is that most of the increases in this year's budget, this past year's budget, uh, were not as a consequence of policies that we initiated, but instead were built in as a consequence of the automatic stablers, uh, stabilizers that kick in uh, because of this enormous recession. So the increase in the budget for this past year was actually uh, predicted before I was even sworn into office and had initiated any policies. Whoever was in there, Paul, and I, I, don't, I don't think you'll dispute that, no. whoever was in there would have seen those same increases because of, on the one hand, huge drops in revenue, but at the same time, people were hurting and needed help. And a lot of these things happen automatically. Now, um, the reason that I'm not proposing the discretionary freeze take into effect this year we prepared a budget for 2010, it's now going forward, is again, I am just listening to the consensus among people who know the economy best. And what they will say is that if you either increased taxes or significantly lowered spending when the economy remains somewhat fragile, that that would have a destimulative effect, and potentially you'd see a lot of folks losing business, more folks potentially losing jobs. That would be a mistake when the economy has not fully taken off. That's why I've proposed to do it for the next fiscal year. So that's point number two. With respect to the line item veto, uh, I actually, I, I think there's not a president out there that wouldn't love to have it. Um, and, you know, I think that this is an area where we can have a serious conversation. I know it is a bipartisan proposal by you and Russ Feingold. Uh, I don't like being held up with big bills that have stuff in them that are wasteful, but I've got to sign because it's a defense authorization bill, and I've got to make sure that our troops are getting the funding that they need. Um, I will tell you, I would love for Congress itself to show discipline on both sides of the aisle. I think one thing that uh, you, know, uh, you have to acknowledge, Paul, because uh, you, you uh, study this stuff and take it pretty seriously, that uh, the earmarks problem is not unique to one party, and you end up getting a lot of pushback when you start going after specific projects of any one of you in your districts, because uh, wasteful spending is usually spent somehow outside of your district. Have you noticed that? The spending in your district tends to seem pretty sensible. Uh, so uh, I would love to see more restraint within Congress 
I'd like to work on the earmarks reforms that I mentioned in terms of putting earmarks online because I think sunshine is the best disinfectant. But I'm willing to have a serious conversation uh, on the line item veto, veto issue. Okay. I, I, I'd like to walk you through that because we have a version we think is constitutional. Let me take a look at it. Um, I would simply say that, that automatic stabilizer spending is mandatory spending. The discretionary spending, the, the bills that Congress has signs that you signed into law, that has increased 84 percent. So we'll, 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 we'll have a longer debate uh, on, on the budget numbers there. 